If you have a fridge that's not quite as cold as it should be in the fridge uh, section or in the freezer section or both, I'm going to show you some things to look at and uh, how to diagnose your own fridge. Okay, so I have a um, temperature sensor in the fridge and in the freezer section. So we're 12 degrees in the freezer section, 32 degrees in the fridge section. So in the fridge section, it should be around 37. So it's actually a little colder than it should be. Um, but in the freezer section, it's 12 degrees, which that should be at zero. Um, that's what it's set to. So it's not quite as cold as it should be in the freezer, but it's an all right temperature in the fridge section. So we'll start out with uh, the gaskets. Okay, so you wanna check these gaskets all the way around, make sure it's actually sealing against the fridge part. As you can see here, it's, it's sealing quite well against uh, the fridge. Um, same with the, the uh, fridge section. Um, check the top of the gaskets, make sure they're not ripped or, or they're actually sealing against there well, um, all the way around. So you can check the bottom of the freezer, check the top of the freezer here, and check all the sides. If there is a big gap there, um, either the gasket's going to need to be replaced, or sometimes they can be stretched if you just use a hairdryer. Uh, put a little bit of heat to them and pull it so it stretches. Don't pull it enough that it actually rips it, but yeah, that's, uh, that's how we do it in, in the field. Um, the next thing we're gonna look at is make sure all the fans are working. Okay, so this is my little sensor thing here. Um, so as soon as you open the freezer door, you can tell that that fan is blowing. You can put your hand in front of it and feel the air actually coming through. Um, what you'll want to check too is that the fan in here is the only fan that's in inside the whole fridge section. This fan blows the cold air from up here down into the fridge part. So we can check um, that the air is actually moving down. Okay, so when you open the door in the fridge section, um, check your settings also. Sometimes these can get bumped um, and you can change your setting and you didn't know you actually changed it. Um, I've seen that quite a bit. Um, so that air comes through here. Um, it's, it's faint, but it's coming through. It's, it's not going to you know, blow your hand away or anything. It's, it's just bringing in enough uh, cold air into this section that it's, it's cold enough to maintain stuff that you put in the fridge section. Um, so now that we know the fans actually coming through, uh, and the fans blowing up here, there's another fan on the back and we'll go check that out. Okay. So we're here at the back of the fridge. Um, most fridges will have either, uh, this cardboard kind of stuff back here or, uh, a tinny metal kind of plate that covers back here. Um, that needs to be there. So don't throw this away or anything like that. Um, this is good for the airflow uh, for cooling down the compressor. So we will run all these screws out. Um, so we're going to be looking for a bunch of things back here. The fan is just the first, first thing that I wanted to take a look at. It's not usually the case that the fan goes, especially in the back. In the freezer section, that fan can go um, every once in a while, depending on the type of fridge. That it, I've seen it more in, in different different types. Um, so you'll have a wiring diagram back here. This is in pretty much every fridge that's out there. Um, so as you can see, the fan right there is spinning uh, as it should. Don't put your hands anywhere near that. It uh, doesn't feel great. <laughs> um, so that fan is going to cool down the compressor. Um, it's also going to cool down the refrigerant that runs through these coils. It will also actually help um, the defrost water comes through this tube into this pan. And as you can see, there's a little bit of water 
down in here, but it'll help that water evaporate also, which it has to do. So um, another thing to check when you're back here is to make sure that your compressor is running. We know our compressor is running because it's actually cold uh, in the fridge and the freezer section, but if it was really warm uh, in both, you can always check that this compressor is running. If it's very, very hot, um, either the fan isn't working or uh, something is wrong with the compressor or the system is out of refrigerant or, or something like that. It's usually a, a huge deal if, if the compressor is like that. So um, these coils, you're gonna wanna make sure that they're clean. That can also contribute to it being warm inside uh, the fridge section. These ones are, are barely dirty at all, um, but you can still take a take a vacuum to them, you know, once a year and, and clean these off. It's not uh, not a tough thing to do, but it helps your fridge uh, survive a little longer. So it's not due to the coils. Um, it's not due to a fan. It's not due to uh, the compressor being dead. And you can feel the compressor hum. Um, when it's running. So yeah, we're all good back here. Um, next, we'll have to go inside the freezer section and take apart that back panel in there. Okay, so now that we're back in the freezer section, um, we got to take um, the shelving out so we can get to that back panel. Um, in this style, there's these little little plug clips, I guess. Um, they're just little plastic pieces. Uh, you can use a pick and just pop all these out. Um, then we've got a bunch of quarter inch uh, screws. You can also note things like this, um, the frost building up on the outside of the panel. It shouldn't really be doing that. Uh, depends how often you open the door, but um, it shouldn't necessarily be doing that. You can also check the position of this setting here. Um, it should be at the re recommended setting, but um, like I said, every fridge is different. So if that's a thing that you've adjusted in yours and it seems to work fine, then leave it as is. But um, yeah, usually I, I recommend to put it, put it to the recommended setting. <laughs> Uh, so we're just going to pop a bunch of these plugs out. Sometimes they can be a real pain. Um, try not to mangle them too much. These ones look like they've been out already before. So that's why they're, they're coming out of there pretty easy. Um, but they are just plastic, so you have to be fairly nice to them. Okay, so that should be all of them. There's a little um, cover here that's for the uh, ice maker wiring and the ice maker fill tube. That's where these come in. Every fridge will have this, whether you have an ice maker or not. So it's not uh, it's not something weird or anything like that. It's supposed to be there. <clears throat> okay, so the rest of these look like they're just quarter inch. So we'll run these out. There's usually, usually a couple um, up in the top there, but they're actually missing, which also tells you that somebody's been in there before. So at this point, we, we know the fan is running and everything. We don't uh, necessarily need to diagnose that. So what I would do at this point, before taking this panel off and everything, um, just in case you don't, you know, you don't want to wreck your fan by taking this off and it hitting the back of this plate. So we're going to unplug it. Um, I just wanted to see a bunch of things in there that the fridge has to be running for at least 24 hours for me to see. But now that it's actually been running for about a week, um, I'll be able to tell just by looking at it and I don't have to have it running. So I'm just going to go back here and unplug this. Okay, so we got that unplugged. Now, what we're gonna do is pull this whole panel out. Now, it may be frozen in there, so do it 
fairly gent gently. Um, but there is little, little clips that you have to disengage in order to pull it out. So I guess you got to have a little force, but don't uh, ram it too hard. You also want to watch for things like this because these little these little posts are actually for the ice maker, but that'll stop this panel from coming out. I usually just, instead of taking these out, which you can take them out, it's not a big deal, but I usually just uh, pull out this side first and then you know, pull it out like that. I'll sometimes use a pick just to help me get it moving. These panels um, are actually really big for this fridge. A lot of them aren't quite that big, but they're a little bit of a pain to, to wiggle out of there. Um, this is the styrofoam piece that basically um, directs all the all the air inside the freezer section. So this is the chute that leads down into the fridge section and that fan blows down through there. So we really want to make sure that this isn't uh, beat up too much. See the fan sits in there and blows it down. So we'll get that out of the way also. Now, um, we know the fan is running, that's fine. Um, if for some reason your fan wasn't running or not, um, you can plug it back in for a sec and make sure that you can hear it or see it run because you want to make sure that that thing's actually working. Um, so the point we're at right now is this is your evaporator. Now it should be full of frost, not quite like this, but looking more like this than what it looks like now. So the refrigerant comes in to the freezer section here um, and runs through these lines back and forth. Um, all the moisture that's in here is, it gets stuck on the evaporator and that's what creates all this, all this frost. Because there's a very short frost pattern that ends pretty much right here as it comes in, we know that the fridge um, fridge section is cold enough. So um, there's enough refrigerant in the system to keep the fridge section as cold as it should be, but it's not cold enough to keep the freezer section cold. And I could tell right away that um, it's going to be because of a low refrigerant situation, which is probably the worst thing for a fridge it pretty much writes it off it's it's so it's getting so expensive to fix that issue um, on a fridge that's this old um, it's it's usually not even not even fixed at this point um, but what can happen in you can you can leave everything off in here close the freezer door um, come back in in about an hour or so and make sure that this isn't all frosted up like it should be and and it's the state that it's in right now we don't know whether this heater right here was just on recently and it went through a defrost which is why that water is down in that pan under or below um, the heater's not not hot but it could have had a chance to cool down by now um, so it turns on the heater, melts all of this, um, water runs down this little tube in the back here, um, and goes underneath the fridge. So usually these upper rows right here um, don't quite get melted like this. It's, it's not going to look quite like that. But you can tell by how heavy the frost is right here. This is, this is beyond <laughs> ridiculous, really. Um, you can tell it's a refrigerant, refrigerant leak somewhere in the system. That's These fridges have, um, actually, I'm not even sure exactly how much this one has. It, four or five ounces, six ounces maybe, um, of refrigerant in it. So if you lose one ounce, from it leaking, uh, it, you'll notice. And that's 
kind of what I think is happening here. Um, it's tar hard to hard to guess at this stuff, but with the compressor running like it like it is, and all the fans running, the um, gaskets are all sealing like they should. Um, this should be nice and frosted up, not heavy frosted up, but lightly, um, and everything should be as cold as it's supposed to be. It's not, so um, yeah, that's that's too bad. I was I was hoping on being able to fix this fridge and, and sell it, but it's, uh, it's not looking like it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's, that's where we're going to, we're going to leave off. This basically ends the search for, um, what was happening with this fridge. Okay guys. So, um, if your fridge is, is doing exactly what this fridge is doing and you've went through all the steps that I've shown and you end up with where I'm at, um, that that sucks um you can look into seeing how much it would cost for somebody to fix the leak and refill the system but it's probably going to be pretty expensive um but that's that's the way refrigerant uh, refrigeration goes anyway see you guys in the next one thanks for watching